Hey, I'm Robbie Kramer. You're listening to the Leverage Podcast, where we discuss using your social skills to hack dating, travel, finding your dream job, and becoming a complete man. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is your host, Robbie Kramer. And today we have a pretty interesting subject. We're going to be talking about following up with people, men and women. Uh, So this isn't just for dating, but it's going to be mostly geared towards following up with women when you get their contact info. And a new kind of paradigm around using Instagram and social media rather than following up via text. You know, the normal way to get a girl on a date after you get her number is to follow up via text. And I've kind of pioneered a new way that I've been using recently, and a lot of other people use this too. I'm not saying I invented this. Uh, But using Instagram, which is the main tool that most women are using when it comes to social media, to follow up and to hang out and to get dates, or to not even get dates and to hang out in a social circle environment and not even have to worry about going on dates. So it's a presentation on stop texting and use Instagram instead, basically. Uh, I want to let you guys know who this is for. So this is for guys who are maybe getting numbers, but having a less than usual conversion ratio from a number to a date. So if you get a girl's number, typically you you'd expect to get her on a date about 50% of the time. And if you're batting under 25%, that means you're doing a lot of stuff wrong. If you're between 25 and 50%, it means you're you're not bad. Your, your texting is decent. Uh, this is also for guys who are getting dates, but the dates aren't getting as physical as you would hope. So in other words, you meet a hot girl, you get her on a date, you want to hook up, but she's not into it. So something's happening, happening on those dates, and I believe that is usually a sign that uh, prior to the date and in your follow-up, you might have lost some points there. This is also for guys who have a lot going on socially, and they don't want to go on dates. This is how I'm currently operating my dating life. I'm always out. I always have a good ratio of girls to guys in my favor. So when I meet new girls, I don't even bother with their phone numbers really anymore. I basically just get their Instagram, and I follow up that way. I invite them out to other things with a group. Eventually, we hook up either during or after those group things. And I don't really ever go on one-on-one dates until after I've you know, hooked up with a girl. It's, I just don't like dates. I've been on a million dates and I'm over it. And it's, uh, it's too much friction for me. <laughs> now, do I recommend that for, for everyone? Definitely not. If you haven't been on a lot of dates and you're you know, pretty new to maybe you know learning about... Uh, social skills and that sort of things, I I recommend going on a lot of dates. But if you've been on a lot of dates and the idea of going on a date is just kind of annoying, then I definitely recommend uh, what I'm about to teach you guys today. Um, And the biggest mindset shift in this new method I'm going to talk about today is that you must never chase girls. And also, if you're courting guys for business or whatever, you must never chase them either. So I'm going to show you how to use social media so the people you're hoping to connect with never feel like you're chasing them. Because once someone feels like you're chasing them, you lose almost all value in their mind. So even if they do agree to end up meeting, odds are that that meeting will not result in what you're hoping for. Those odds will drastically decrease. So I've got a student on the line who is a pretty piss poor texter when he came to me. Uh, But after working together, I think he's great now. And I think he's in the top 95 percentile of guys when it comes to text, texting, follow-up, text game, whatever you want to call it. And he's looking to make the transition away from texting to a more social circle, social media-based approach like I do. So I've got him on the line to ask questions and to help steer my presentation. So welcome to the show, Jason. Thank you, Robbie Kramer. I appreciate uh, the 95 percent flattery. I don't know if that's accurate, but I definitely... um, (laughs) <laughs> Thanks. You think I'm giving you too much credit? I do, but but I but I, I I'll take it when, when I can get it. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We started talking. I think about a year and a half ago. Um, I was kind of doing the nomadic life and 
meeting a lot of girls while traveling and kind of hit or miss connecting with them, um, sometimes writing novelistic uh, texts and <laughs> sh sharing all of my <laughs> innermost feelings and doing all the wrong shit. Right. Um, I would bug you at random times with messages and you would very generously analyze uh, a lot of that stuff for me. And um, eventually, you know, I, I, I feel like n now whether I, you know, whether I, I, I'm awesome or not, I can, I can, I can detect when I've uh, sent a, a, a dud of a message and, um, I kind of usually know how to, how to navigate things a bit better. And, and a lot of it is just about controlling, um, just about controlling your vomit, you know, and, <laughs> All right. and, 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 and knowing what not to say and knowing how to think about scarcity and all that stuff. Yeah, the process we went through when we were doing a lot of coaching around texting, I think was pretty good. Um, I had done that process a couple times, but never really as in depth as you and I did it. Um, and basically what we did for people listening is first I had you go through my advanced texting guide. Well, you'd already gone through the basic stuff. Uh, so you went through the advanced guide and then you would basically send me all of your conversations and I would send you feedback a lot of the time in real time. <laughs> so I was texting a lot of the girls that you were meeting. Uh, they had no idea. Uh, and then I would tell you why, and you would always propose a text. So you'd say, you know, screenshot of your conversation, a proposed text, and I would either give you the red light or the green light. And if it was a red yep. light, I would tell you why it sucked. And if it was a green light, I would tell you why it was good and maybe how you could improve it a little bit. Mm hmm Yeah, it was kind of, uh, it, was, it was intense for a little while when we were doing that. But yeah, I mean, I... I began to see patterns and uh, you, you, you kind of showed me what to strip away and kind of what to focus on and definitely, you know, I mean, even, so I went through the texting guide to prepare for this conversation and even, even when I just went through it the other day, there's still like pearls of wisdom in there that I, I forget, but you know, um, there's a there's this nugget about you know you don't you don't reach out to somebody about something that you want from them you think about it from the perspective of like what are they going to feel or think or experience when they get your message and i think that's like that's uh just kind of a key i don't know a key kind of like a thing to think shift. about yeah, it's it's a powerful yeah. it's a powerful mindset. That way, you're always having the experience of the the listener or the receiver in mind, and that mm -hmm. way, you know, you can put yourself in their shoes, and you're more likely to to not send something cringeworthy and send something that you know they'll actually see as an opportunity versus a chore. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, I mean, we forget that in all kinds of in many aspects of life, I think we forget that. And especially when we're all like amped up about how we just met somebody that we're attracted to or whatever. We want to want to get them out on a date. We want to hook up with them, you know, and it's, it's, it's want, it's want mentality. It's not like, Hey, how does this, you know, right. What would this person think of if they heard this from me? How would, would that make them smile? Or like, you know, how can I brighten, that person's experience right yeah, now. Yeah, totally. And, and I want to reiterate too, I said this earlier, but it goes both ways and it goes for both men and women as well. I use the same sort of approach when it comes to courting guys for friendships, business, anything, you know, dude related. It, it, the, the principles apply exactly the same. Instead of, uh, you're not really using sexual tension, <laughs> but, uh, you know, everything else is basically identical. And, uh, you know, you've a, a lot of guys, I think, fuck this up more with other guys where they meet a guy and they, you know, discuss some business stuff. And when they follow up, they get way too business like and cold um, because they're just trying to get the job done or they're just trying to get what they want. 
and they forget it's it's you know it's a relationship they need to build that relationship yeah um yeah i'm i'm very aware of all of that right now in my my life and uh something i i i think about pretty much on a con semi constant <laughs> basis so yeah, well, yeah it's relevant I, it, for you right now because yeah. you're in the middle of a job search um, yeah which kind of during the a little bit of a career change or whatever you want to call it um, transition transitional time yeah transitional for sure. time yes <laughs> so um so yeah so it'd be cool if uh, you know i'm gonna have you ask a bunch of questions i know you come came up with some really good ones um, and then if you see, if you have any questions or see how maybe this could relate to business or to friendships or to anything, obviously besides, uh, dating and men and women interactions, um, you know, feel free to ask all those too. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds good. And one thing, um, the, the way I kind of came up with this style of helping guys improve their, you know, their follow up skills um and it's, and this is one of the things that i feel like in the dating pickup community you know when guys are trying to learn to become better with women they really overlook they they really don't understand how much texting and following up and being really shitty at that just ruins their chances and because it's you know it's one of the last things that people kind of look at for for some reason um and if you can tweak that you can have such a huge improvement in your results and your dating life. So I think, uh, you know, for everyone listening, pay close attention and really try to figure out, you know, where you're kind of at on this, on this stage when it comes, you know, if you, if you, most guys really think they're good at texting and they fucking suck. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, I thought I was good way back in the day and I was fucking terrible. And the way that I learned was, uh, was through my buddy, uh, and it was the same way I learned poker. Uh, but, sorry, it wasn't the same way I learned poker, but it was the same way I went from okay at poker to really good at poker. And it's all pattern recognition. And what I did was I would basically watch the hands that I would play. It was all online. So you would have a recording of the hands. And I would sit with uh, a poker tutor, and we'd go over the decisions that I made in each hand. So here, you know, I had pocket aces. How did I act before the flop? Did I raise? Did I call? Did I fold? You know, what did I do and what should I have done in that situation? And then we just went over hand by hand by hand and each situation. That's the same thing you and I did when it came to texting. And you started to see the way you were fucking up and the patterns and the sort of responses you'd get. And then it just kind of becomes second nature once you start to see those patterns and it becomes a lot easier. Right. You know that you're like, oh, I'm... I've said something like this before, and this is coming from this place of like needing this, and that ne that never works. And you know, yeah, you start to see all of that. It kind right. of all makes a lot more sense. Yeah, totally. And just like poker, you know, if you're if you're highly emotional and you you really need to win that hand, or you really need to win that session, because if you don't, you'll be broke. You're probably going to lose. And if you're really needy when it comes to chicks and you haven't gotten a number in a long time and you haven't gotten laid or you haven't been on a date and you really need to get this one, that's going to come across too. And you're going to lose that one as well. So the, the biggest thing is not to chase and to do your best to create a, uh, an abundance mentality, even if you don't have one. And we can talk about that a little bit too. So let's dive in. Um, yeah. I guess the, the major shift, I'll talk about my experience. The major shift I first saw uh, about maybe two years ago, and uh, this is being recorded August 10th, 2018. So it was around 2016. I might have been a little late to the party, um, maybe even a little bit before. But we saw a huge kind of cultural movement of... Instagram, uh, you know, there's that song, I forget who it was, it goes down in the DM, which is direct message. I'm probably sounding like an uncultured idiot, but maybe, was that Drake? Who the fuck was it? Do you remember? No. Yeah. No. But you remember the song, no. right? It goes down in the DM, which, which is yeah. basically meaning, you know, it was guys. playing. It was, it was playing in the gym like yesterday. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, swear, I swear it was. <laughs> and what that means is shit is going down. 
guys and girls are getting laid. <laughs> They're hooking up through direct message on Instagram. I compared to how much I used to use, you know, iMessage um, to follow up with girls. It used to be like 90 percent. Now it's like five to ten um, or even WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp is super popular, especially for those people who travel. But, you know, when I'm when I'm on a very friend to when I'm on a very um, what's the word? When I know someone really well, I'll typically communicate with them through WhatsApp. And if I don't know them super well, you know, even if, if it's a chick and we've been hooking up a few times, a lot of the time I'll still use Instagram. And uh, the reason why is girls spend more time on Instagram than basically anywhere else on their phone. Uh, guys as well. You know? And why not use the channel of communication that they're already on, right? Now, the one thing that may not be great is a lot of guys try to hit up new girls on social media. You know, they try to direct message a girl they don't know. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about you're out, you meet a chick or you meet a guy and you exchange Instagrams rather than phone numbers and then you follow up via Instagram. And the reason why this strategy is so much more powerful is because it doesn't require you to stay top of mind or to do any sort of work to get them to remember you. You're going to show up right in their feed. If you have cool shit going on and you're posting about that, there's an opportunity for them to like your pictures, watch your videos, and you can really gauge how much a person is interacting with you by their activity on your Instagram. So if I go out and I meet a chick, and we exchange Instagrams and I post a few pictures and she likes them all. And I notice she watches all of my stories. I know she's into me. It's you know beyond, <laughs> beyond a reasonable doubt she is into me. And I'm going to reciprocate the love and I'm going to give her some love back and like her pictures and like her videos. And when something comes along that is maybe funny or interesting. I might comment on that picture or video. Likely she'll do the same. If she's commenting a lot on my shit first, then it's even more of a sign that she's into me. And we'll kind of play. We'll, it's it's a dance of uh, of interest. You know, it's, you're liking it. She's liking it. Comment here, comment there, and then that transitions into oh, what are you up to this weekend? Or what are you doing? Oh, I'm going out with friends. You should come hang out with us. She comes out, I'm already with cool guys, other cute girls, and it's a second taste that she's had for me because we already met in person the first time, and it's very easy to then, you know, transition that into a more sort of romantic, you know, she's already going to be into me based on our other interactions, and plus she's been following my stuff and liking it, so she's coming out with the attitude of, ooh, I, I like this guy, she's coming to meet me. But I'm also in a social situation, so I don't have to give her a ton of attention. You don't have the pressure that you would have on a normal first or second date. Um, you know, there's other people that you can interact with. She gets to see your friends. She gets basically you're bombing her with so social proof, and that's the main difference. If you're texting a girl and you're just following up via text, you you can't show any social proof. There's no way for her to see how cool you are, that you're an interesting person, that you do interesting stuff, that you're the type of person she'd want to hang out with more. But if you use social media, it's very easy to show that. Now, conversely, if you have nothing going on in your life and you don't have a, a very interesting social media presence, this strategy is not going to work very well for you. Um, that was a big question of mine when I was thinking about this because it's like a huge philosophical shift from one-on-one -on -one dating to break, like sort of commun communal vibe that leads to dating, hooking up. It's a it's a big philosophical shift from trying to build a personal connection with specific messages versus letting your social presence do all the talking for you and building more of a like a public public versus private connection but like like you said i mean 
what if you are a guy who or a girl who doesn't you know who doesn't really engage or who's like really private and doesn't just doesn't doesn't do a lot of that or you're like you're like one of those people who like got it got an instagram account and put up like three posts and like hasn't touched it in like a few years or what do you say to those people because you're i think the argument is is cool and it's smart to to sort of make this shift but how do you address the all of the people listening who don't who either aren't comfortable or just don't have like the goods to to offer to to show how cool of a life they they're living you know what i mean sure yeah the, this can be used as either a primary strategy as i'm using it um and i'm kind of in a stage right now of my life where i'm single uh i'm hooking up instead of doing a lot of dating right and i'm I have a huge social circle of girls and I'm trying to keep things casual, right? So going on any sort of one-on-one -on -one date gives out the impression that I'm looking for something more significant. Now, if the right girl comes along, sure, I'm always open to that. Um, but, you know, when you when you go on a date, you know, you're, you're looking to move through that kind of progression of dating to some sort of a relationship, right? If So I guess what I'm doing could be more considered like hookup culture in college um you know like the frat sorority scene uh where you're you're meeting people at parties you're seeing them again and again and again and then eventually you're just kind of hooking up with them and you, you know if you're hooking up with their friends or hooking up with your friends and it's just all a big whatever you know what i'm saying so that's that's on one extreme how you can use this on the other extreme let's say you know you don't even have an instagram account and you're so busy with work or other shit that you know it, the idea of starting one is is not well <laughs> it doesn't sound like fun um you can use this if if you do want that extra little boost you can start an instagram account and basically just use it as your own picture database because it's it's a great way to store your own pictures as well because it's never going to go anywhere and it's nicely ordered in chronological order and you're going to post your best stuff you can just kind of use it as a photo album and and then you can share it with people when you meet them um, but it'll be obvious to them that you're not super active on instagram and that's okay you know you don't really lose a ton of points if you're not really active on instagram unless you're trying to date like you know sorority girls or you're in the crazy party burning man model crowd you know if you're just a normal regular guy you know living in a city <laughs> <laughs> work in the nine to five <laughs> and your instagram isn't fucking lit <laughs> you're gonna be okay right uh -huh. but it is a great tool <laughs> it is a great tool to have as an extra so let's say you are like whatever pretty normal guy have a normal job i don't even know what fucking normal is i don't even know who i'm talking about <laughs> let's take you for example <laughs> Who's I'm, fucking normal? I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if I fall into that. You're either, definitely but... not normal, but you're not. A, you're not someone who's just like you know. Your Instagram is not fire, and you're not trying to be fire on Instagram. Let's say, right? Although your Instagram's not bad. You've got what a couple thousand followers. That's pretty good. I, I used to be because I was when I was traveling. I was tra I was uh, I was going to launch this blog, and I, I had a I had a an Upwork girl in Bangladesh uh, who helped me grow the, grow my account and. <laughs> Okay, um, but I mean, I you know, I, I I took some some cool photos and did some cool stuff with it. But yeah, like when I came back to the states and I kind of got focused on other things, um, I just was like, you know, I I don't know, I didn't feel like t anything that I was gonna shoot was was as cool as like was Instagram you know, worthy, like glacier climbing in patagonia or shit that i you know, used to do so it was like i'm not i don't want to put put up you know whatever well you so, can have a so w one thing you can do if if you're worried about you know maybe your pictures aren't as cool as other people's or your content's not that great like i said um you can have a private instagram and you can just post shit that for your own kind of timeline for your own memory bank um 
And then when you do meet someone in person, you're going to exchange numbers. And after a few texts back and forth, you're then going to exchange Instagrams. That way, you have this channel as an option to stay top of mind. And remember, the whole point of using social media when it comes to dating and courting people is, is simply staying top of mind, as I mentioned, because if you don't use social media, you have to send them something for them to for you to be on their radar. Right. And the act of sending something is showing interest. Right. You're, you're showing interest. And I don't want to say chasing because you might not. It's only chasing if it's in the eyes of the person being potentially chased. Right. They might not feel chased. They might feel really excited to hear from you, you know. Um, but you run the risk of chasing. That's the thing. Whereas with social media, it's a passive strategy. All you're doing is posting. And if they choose to like it, then that's a sign that they're chasing you or they're showing interest, right? So it's really, really powerful because you're basically only going to be interacting with people that you already know are interested. And you're going to be able to gauge who's interested really easy. And the better your Instagram is, the more opportunity there is for someone to like your shit. But if it's not great... If your Instagram sucks and they're still liking your stuff, then that's a that's even better sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah, okay. Or it's a it's a it's a better sign or it's a sign that you're you're courting a a, a dud. <laughs> 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 right? Not necessarily. I mean you can decide, right? It's, it's, uh, it's I, like <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like that. It's like that thing about how people date people who who are this who are of the same caliber looks as as they are, right? It's like you you date people who have the same quality social media account as you. Well, maybe. when it comes to uh, when it comes to a lot of <laughs> a lot of the dating cultures out there, that's sadly true these days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if you're out and uh, you know. I'm trying to think of a, a a typical situation where we can make fun of basic Instagram bitches, right? Like if like the the, the basic like, ocean like the brunch, beach, like a, yeah. basic ocean beach Instagram chick who's always posting like her acro yoga shit and her surfing, and she's super spiritual and her mimosas and like you know all the surfer dudes she's banging. It's fucking painfully obvious, right? There's that girl, right? And if your Instagram isn't fire, then you're not fucking her. There's no way. <laughs> right. You know, totally. she's on seeking arrangements and she doesn't have a job. Nothing wrong with seeking arrangements. I love that site, but <laughs> that, that's how it works. And um, just to, to I, maybe we can talk about seeking arrangements a little while later, but a lot of these sites, right? If you're, if you're using online dating, um, you know, girls won't even talk to you before seeing their Instagram. I wouldn't fucking talk to a girl <laughs> from an online dating site without looking at her Instagram because odds yeah, are, yeah. you know, odds are her shit's fake. And not that Instagram can't be fake. You can Photoshop everything on there. But I'm I'm a pretty good detective these days when it comes to what's real and what's not. You always have to go by their, their worst possible picture. That's what you can expect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, online dating, fuck, I haven't done a, a ton of online dating recently because I've all, all the girls I'm meeting are through social circle. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't have a, a strong Instagram or if you, it, sorry, if you don't have a Instagram that can at least verify how you look in your online dating profile, you're going to be in pretty big trouble if you want to date a girl who's halfway decent looking. That's funny. I, well, a couple things. I still use online dating. I do not attach my Instagram to any of those accounts. Um, and maybe I should. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Uh, you're, you're leaving a lot of money on the table, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I should. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I always feel like, and maybe that's just a, a me thing or a, well, uh, let's know. flip. Let's like put you in her shoes. Privacy, or, right? but what about your What about your shoes? Or what about your situation? If a girl has her Instagram on hers, do you look? Some girls on dating apps don't even. They're literally like, "I'm never on here." 
hit me up on hit me up on Instagram. And I always think it's like a shitty ploy to get Instagram followers to like it might open be. A, <laughs> open an online like yeah like let me I'm this hot this hot chick let me open an, a Tinder account and just be like follow me on Instagram and I get a shitload of followers that way. But there's nothing. Yeah, that's that's nothing, the like, it's a know? shitty strategy. Um, or, like, right. would you even? Do you even bother with that? Or some of them are just like, I'm never on here. DM me on on Instagram or like. Yeah, doing like, that, you, you know, following you her instructions that? is a really shitty strategy, right? Yeah. It's a good cool. strategy for her if she wants more followers right. and a bunch of thirsty exactly. dudes, right? But doing yeah, that yeah. is you're not only are you getting, you know, not only are you just another fucking bro hitting her up through an online dating site, right? You're doing it through through Instagram, through direct message, where she's already getting bombarded by random dudes hitting her up, right? Yeah, I can't, yeah. <laughs> I, so I just don't even know why, why you would bother with that. And I'm constantly, you know, hanging out with models and girls who have, you know, huge numbers of followers. Um, and I'm, I'm always asking them and, and looking at their Instagrams. One, one friend of mine her Instagram is attached to my phone so I can log on to her Instagram right now. Let, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. She would not give a fuck. I could probably even give it out on this call. Yeah. Why not? All right. So her, her username is Aliaska dot Sorova. A L Y A S K A period. S U R O V A. Aliaska Sorova. Okay, so um, if you go into her her messages, um, she has seventy four unread message requests. Um, those are from people that don't follow her, and then she's got fuck looks like about nine or ten unopened requests, and it's just all dudes. Most of this is in Russian, so I can't read it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just guys hitting her up. Like, you know, it's just, hey, what's up? What's up? Yo, you're hot. How are you? Hi, hi, blah, blah, blah. You know, let's let's hang. What are you doing? How are you? Right? It's just tons of interest, basically. Um, and 74 unopened requests, right? That's like, that. that's what's going to happen if you send a random girl you meet through Instagram, if you send her a DM, you're going right to her. I'm never going to read this pile. Right. So going back to going back to like, how would this work for the average Joe? Right. Let, let's, let's forget about that. Let's just say, how would this work for Jason? Right. You're, you're not super active on Instagram. You don't have a ton of content to post a lot of the time. Right. But you have, you have some pictures on there, which is a great base. And let's say you didn't and you wanted to post just a bunch of pictures. You know, you could just go through chronologically the last couple of years and just upload a ton of shit on your Instagram. Keep it private, right? There's, there's no one's really going to judge you for how many followers you have, especially if you have a private account and you're not following a gazillion people, right? Let's say you have an account where you've got 10 followers and you're following 300. Now that might look a little strange, right? If you <laughs> exchange Instagrams with a girl or a guy, um, but if it's you're not actively trying to follow a ton of people and you're just more using it for a personal database and you trade it with a girl, you're, you're good to go. You know, you don't have to worry about how you're going to per be perceived based on your popularity on there. And as you get more and more numbers and your dating life, you know, becomes more active, like if, if let, let's say you're recently in a relationship and, you know, you broke up and you're back in the dating scene, my advice would be to build an Instagram, add girls when you meet them, and just simply use it for the, for those reasons. Use it as a database for pictures and an opportunity for girls to like your shit and interact with your social media without having to text them. So you're not going to stop texting them, and you're not going to be that extreme like the way I use it, where I'm never asking girls out on dates and I'm only hanging out with them in group situations and then hooking up with them from there. You're not using it like that, like a promoter or a you know, crazy party animal like me would. Um, you're using it in conjunction with texting. 
And it's a, an amazing way to follow up. Let's say she doesn't respond to one of your texts because if you double text, that's such a that's such a no no, right? But if she likes a couple of your Instagram stuff later on, now you can follow up with her again, or you can direct message her on Instagram. And a lot of the times, you'll find that messaging messaging her on Instagram will yield better results than messaging her via text because girls spend more time on Instagram. It's also depending on what's going on in their brain. Some girls don't like getting messages, they, but they love getting direct messages on Instagram from people they know, right? It's, it's this very finicky. It's, it's on a user by user, case by case basis, but you might get a text and be like, Oh, awesome. I get it. I got a text. Or you might be someone who got a text and be like, Ugh, fuck something annoying to respond to. Like when I get a text now on my phone, it's, it's like getting, it's like opening the mail. It's just bad news. Typically. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing I want to hear from someone who's texting me. It's some business or it's, you know, I owe someone money, a car payment, this or that, right? It's bad news, just like the mail, right? How often do you look yeah. forward to opening the fucking mail? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, I wanted to get a little bit more granular about, like, the kinds of – just the technique for sending messages because the texting guide is – pretty detailed about what to text when and in what context. So at some point, I, I, I would love to hear what you have to say if there's like go to kind of. Yeah, let's go through some let's go through some case studies. That'll be the easiest way. Like you just brought up a really good one, I think. Right. Like, say I text girl who I met at bar couple nights ago we exchange a little banter we try to set up a date um it fizzles right doesn't work out how now was i supposed to get that girl to follow me on instagram when i met her and or do i in, inject that into a text somewhere to make that happen um, you, you want to exchange Instagrams prior to any sort of date, right? Right. And it's easier to exchange Instagrams than it is to exchange numbers. And you can do it in a very sly way. You can be talking to someone and this works great if there's a language barrier too. I mean, this is kind of like my go-to game when I'm talking to girls here in Ukraine and Russia that a lot of the time speak no English at all, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say Privyet, Gaktala. Hi, how are you? And you know that that's basically all I know. And if they don't know any English, which a lot of them don't, I'll just pull up my Instagram and I'll say, "Oh, Instagram, Instagram," ah, and then we'll just go through each other's Instagrams and start liking pictures and following each other. And believe it or not, that <laughs> at least to sex a decent amount of the time. That's a, that's that's amazing. I want to come visit you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's shocking how well this works because it's just social proof, right? People are yeah, if you're yeah. thinking, why the fuck would that work? Because it's like, look, here's me having fun, traveling. Obviously, there's lots of beautiful women around me, which means, you know, that she should be there too. I do weird shit. I'm kooky. I'm crazy. I take my dog on planes. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm there. Yeah, wh why not? Let's bang, yeah. right? It's, yeah, <laughs> you're basically you're communicating everything you could you possibly need to communicate for sex to happen, right? Yeah, and you don't and you don't even have to use words. <laughs> it's painfully easy. <laughs> no, it's it's like, yeah, it's like. And if you met her in a social situation where you're already validated because you're friends of a friend, now it's it's even easier. Right, you can, mm -hmm. but you can do that on a cold approach. You could walk up to a girl. I've I've done it many times, um, you know, in Odessa and Kiev. Approach a girl, you know, out at a bar or even on the street, and no English. Oh, Instagram, Instagram, show me, show me, blah blah blah. Like <laughs> that's it. It's not a very interesting conversation when <laughs> when you go right. out on a date. That's for sure. Right, right. It's a lot of Google Translate, um, and that's another reason why I guess I've been doing more of the social circle stuff because. Dates are really not interesting when there's a language barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, that's the that's a perfect uh, scenario. Um, 
So wait, you were telling me about a, a scenario or you want me to go through a, a few different ones that I have? So I'm here in L.A. I met this girl on a, a dating app a few weeks ago. And we went on a date and went to a few bars in L.A. Which dating app? Happen. It was Happen. Happen. Okay. And you don't have your Instagram connected, correct? I don't have my Instagram connected to any of my social accounts. So we, we hit it off. We had, a, we had a good time. We went to a few bars here in L.A. We made out a bunch at the end of the night. And, you know, like, it's been kind of awkward because I'm, I'm shuffling around places. So, like, I didn't, I didn't really feel like I could bring her home with me. Mm-hmm. And so we you just... You didn't explain that just, to her, though? Uh, I mean, I, she knew like that I was shuffling around, but she didn't like invite me to her place either. So you couldn't bring her back to your place. It didn't feel like the best idea. So that was, that was the first date, which was like two weeks ago. So we were going to hang out, I think the next weekend. And then I knew she was going out the night before she invited me to some group thing that I said no to because it's not a date. Um, um, interesting. And I and 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 I and maybe maybe I should have gone to that based yeah. on Robbie logic. Well, why but do you think she invited me in to that? I don't know. I mean, in my head, I'm like, that's a, that's that's not a good. But but maybe it was like, hey, I want him to like meet my friends and have like a social vibe, and maybe I just didn't pick up on that because I was thinking. I want to hook up with this girl. Right. And you thought, you know? oh, if I go out with her, then probably won't yeah. be able to do that. So, yeah, that's that's a that's a, a poor thinking. Right. Um, and I understand why why you had that idea. And it, mm-hmm. like I said, it could be a case by case basis. Um, mm-hmm. But what was most likely going through her head was obviously, OK, I like this guy. I was already physical with him. We were kissing. Um, I want to see where this goes, but I don't really know much about him other than he was cool on the first date. But Mm -hmm. people have buyer's remorse or they're dating other guys. There's a million reasons why just because you made out on the first date, that's going to result in anything else, right? So from her standpoint, it's like, all right, well, if I go on another date with him, then there's this expectation of sex. And that now creates friction in her mind. Because she probably wants to have sex, but then at the same time, there could be tons of different cultural reasons or religious reasons or whatever the fuck is in her head about why she might want to wait, right? And and that creates a lot of friction potentially in her mind, right? And the idea of going out on another one-on-one date just becomes something that creates too much friction in her mind so she'd rather just uh it's like i don't want to think about it right it's like oh i got this credit card builds due i don't know if i have enough in my account it's pretty close ah fuck it i'll deal with it later <laughs> <laughs> it's that sort that of analogy <laughs> that's such a good analogy <laughs> right it's painful so, so sad <laughs> it's the saddest analogy Right? I love I love it though. It's it's spot on. It's <laughs> it's, it's pain. You don't want to deal with the pain, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you wouldn't <laughs> think that that's happening for her, but trust me, that happened that's happening all the time. It happens for me a lot when girls want to hang out one on one. I'm like, "Oh, uh, fuck. I don't want to commit to that. What if what if it's boring, right?" <laughs> and I know she's she's going to fuck, like, but I'm just like, "Uh, right? you know, <laughs> let's just hang out in a group and then Maybe we'll have sex or maybe, you know, we'll have sex with a bunch of people. Who knows, right? <laughs> I don't want to commit to this. <laughs> yeah. You know, what if something better comes up and I have to cancel and then I'm a dick for flaking, right? There's, there's so many ways that a one-on-one date creates friction in people's minds. Especially yeah. the more opportunities they have socially, the more friction it creates. Right. Like five years ago, if... You know, a hot girl wanted to go out with me. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd like, <laughs> clear everything. And if there was anything someone else invited me to, I'd be like, no way. I've got a date with a hot girl. Now it's the right. opposite. It's I don't want to schedule anything because something else might come up that's, you know, way more interesting. Or and, and I hate flaking on people and letting people down and then feeling like I have to follow up 
it's and shit comes up all the time because I have a very active social life. So that's probably what was going through her head. So she's like, okay, well, I like this guy. I kind of want to see how he does in, you know, a social situation. I don't have his Instagram, so I don't really know. Maybe he just fooled me on the first date, right? Maybe I got too drunk. There's those questions going on. So let's, let me invite him out with my friends and see what happens. Now it's, it's not like an amazing scenario for you because she, you know, you're basically, she's got home court advantage big time. Yeah. 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 It's much better if you're like, well, let's go together as a group, my friends and your friends, but that can be a little bit hard to coordinate, very hard to coordinate a lot of the time. Right. Um, but you could also say, oh, sorry, I'm busy, but I'm actually going out with a group of friends. If you want to come on this day, you could counter with that proposal. Now, it's not the end of the world to go out and let the let it be home court advantage for her. I don't mind that at all because um, I can connect and meet new people that way. And I know yeah. I'm going to be fine. Yeah, no, that, it, it's interesting. I guess I, I, I came up always like group date is like walking into the fucking lion's den. And by, under no circumstances do you do that because you're guaranteed, you know, because it's not a date, and you're not going to get any, and it's not a good situation. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I mean, a... on, on, honestly, and and it's like from, and I think that's like old, pick up, you know, pick up school, mentality shit old that I've pick read. Pick up asshole advice. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah. Yep. But I think I I think I, I I internalized some of that, and I and I still when I get the, hey, come hang out with me and my friends. I I still have that like. The, the smoke alarm goes off. A little oh, I'm bit getting friend like, zone. Fuck this bitch. <laughs> exactly. Friend zone. Exactly. They're friend zone you, scarred for life. Right. And, but I mean, I think this is more realistic perspective of like, hey, you know, there are other things at play other than like an automatic, you know, you're you're dead in the water because why would she even invite you to anything I guess yeah, it's risky right? for her right right because everyone's gonna ask oh how do you know this guy oh we went out one time she's like oh wow you're bringing him out you must you must like him or you must she must think you're halfway decent right obviously she made out with you and she's willing to subject her friends to your presence so she must think pretty highly of you yeah so you you declined that opportunity Right, right. So, so this is what happened. I declined that opportunity. We were supposed to go out, I think, like the next day. I got a text from her, and she was like, "I'm so, so sorry. Like, I'm really hungover. Can we res- can we reschedule?" And I said, "All good, sure, you know." And and we did reschedule. So I saw her. I saw her last weekend on Saturday night. How much time had passed? Yeah, just about two weeks, I think. Fuck. Yep, that's a problem because now you got basically have to redo the first date. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You're not going to probably get any further. You're going to have the same fucking painful conversation again. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking. It might be a great conversation, but you know, you lost all your momentum. We had a good time, but yes, the momentum was lost. Had a good time. Ended up closing down uh, employees only. Uh, made out in the street. Um, and then again, went our separate ways and mm. I was pretty drunk actually. Like I, I, I'm, so you spent I, I, more money, got fat from alcohol and are in the exact same spot that you were two weeks prior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this scenario. This is great. This is the exact reason why putting too much time between your dates and not having social proof will end up leaving you with your penis in hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so talk, so talk about that. Like, like, yeah. Cause I wanted to, yeah. I wanted she to likes look. you obviously, you know, she likes you enough to exchange bodily fluids. <laughs> and at the same time, you know, I, I, she's probably cute with a bunch of shit going on and a pretty active social life. And just the idea of, more dates and maybe there's some sexual hangups there it's very very likely um you know it's- i was actually thinking I, I i thought about you 
after that date because I was like, she's she's Ukrainian. Like Robbie, Robbie always says like you have to be more more aggressive. Maybe I wasn't aggressive enough, you know. Like I had all these like Eastern Europe uh, women thoughts. Yeah, you you definitely. Uh... Ukrainians uh, and Eastern European girls have not been indoctrinated with feminism uh, like girls from the West. So they're expecting you to be much more aggressive. And if you're not, you are pussy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, may, the, I, I, I would be not surprised at all if that was the case. Did you offer to you know invite her back or anything? I don't, I don't recall, I, like, I was in, I was in that state where I, like, I'm not quite sure how the night. You got too totally, drunk. Okay. Totally ended, which I don't normally do, but. Yeah. Um, well, I you're, you're had, not going out a whole had, lot, right? So if you're not going out a whole lot, you're not drinking a whole lot, you know. No, I'm drinking plenty. I'm oh, drinking okay. plenty. But, you know, you're with a girl. <laughs> you're going to drink more. You're going to drink more if she's, you know, also drinking heavily and matching you drink for drink and you're having fun. And She's she's also a, yeah, she can put it away, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Ukrainian so, girls typically yes. can. So, yes. Yeah, there could be, you know, so what, what went wrong? Well, spending too much time in between dates, that was definitely not good. Um, I think you would have been fine. Um, and from a timing standpoint, you would have been much, it would have been ideal to accept her invitation to go out with a group of friends. And remember in the beginning stages, it's really important to keep the time between meetings very brief. Um, you know, it, and it depends on what sort of relationship you're looking for, but let's say you're looking for casual relationships. You meet a girl, you get her contact info, right? you don't want to really wait too much longer than a week to see her again because it'll fizzle out, right? So you want to set up some sort of group hangout or a date basically as soon as possible. And you're going to see if she likes you based on, you know, how she responds to your normal messages and how she interacts with your Instagram. So give her a couple opportunities to like a post, right, before you ask her out or even just one, right? Um, or if you're – the more stories you do and the more opportunities she has to see your stories – there's another opportunity for, for you to gather information. Basically, what you're doing is you're just gathering information. Because every time she acts, you get information, just like poker. When you see someone make a decision, that's information. And the more information you have, the better informed decisions you can make. So then you get her on a date, uh, make out at the end of the date, great. Uh, you want to schedule the next date, you know, ideally within the next week. And if you hook up on that date, you know, if you have sex then you want to ideally have sex again relatively soon because if you have sex that second time, now you guys are casual people that fuck, right? And if you, if you then want to speed that into something more because you really like each other, it, you can quickly go from you know casual to boyfriend-girlfriend in a matter of you know, less than two weeks if, if she's sleeping over, you know, more than three nights a week. If you're seeing a girl more than twice a week, um, you're giving her the signal that you want something serious. So if you want to keep things casual, after the second time of sex, my advice is always to then back it off to once a week tops. That way your actions are consistent with, let's just be casual. I like you. I enjoy hanging out with you, but seeing her more than once a week is going to give that sig the, the wrong signal that you want something more. Because if you see someone twice a week, you're someone's going to fall in love very quickly. Right. So to steer this back toward the the main topic here, like how could someone in my with my scenario, for example, use social media to mm, make to get this girl make, back? Or, or just, or just, how could I have used it to make the whole thing better? I guess you know, like, what's the? Well, had you exchanged can, social media, can, maybe, yeah. maybe that would have been enough evidence for her to not invite you out for the group. Maybe she would have wanted to hang out one on one sooner, and maybe she wouldn't have flaked, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The flaking. Mm-hmm. Whenever you flake on someone, it's it sucks for them, obviously, because they get flaked on, but it also sucks for you because now there's pressure for you to not flake again. Right. That can create more friction. So av- avoiding flaking is fucking vital. Like once someone flakes on either side, the odds of that turning into uh, something more like decrease dramatically it's a huge Hmm. drop off any sort of flaking obviously you want to be the one doing the flaking if you can (laughs) but it's not good right Um, Right. and I don't recommend flaking on uh, on purpose and bullshit like that Um, but uh, yeah going back to your question had had she had your Instagram that would have just been just been more opportunities for connection more opportunities to gather information Um, and the way you could follow up is now that, you know, you, you asked her out again or you follow up and she didn't respond. Mm. I don't see any point or I don't see any, uh, any reason why you can't just send her a text. Hey, by the way, what's your IG? What's your Instagram? Okay. You think that that doesn't seem needy or like, I don't know trying to push a a further connection i mean no matter what you're gonna text that's gonna seem like that right but Mm -hmm, aside from bumping into her there's nothing else you can do yeah fair and if she doesn't respond to that then you know you're fucking dead in the water and there was nothing else you could have possibly sent (laughs) that would have changed anything so you can put that one to bed mentally Right. You don't have to think about right. it anymore. So yeah, send right. it right now. Let's see if she responds on the call. I'm I'm I'll wait till tomorrow. It's one forty six AM. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not the best time to send it. I think I feel like that's against the, the nine the nine PM rule. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Which I which I which I really have, have tried to put in practice. Yes, but it's okay on uh you know, weekdays, but not really yeah. past 11 and certainly weekends Friday or Saturday if you're texting between the hours of like 7 and and 4 a.m. it's uh, not yeah. a good look no not unless they just left your place yes um yeah no but I I, I will I'll do that tomorrow um so yeah so to keep rolling you said you had you had some scenarios that you'd come up with and I'd love to hear hear think everyone would love to hear those okay so let me just go through a few recent exchanges i've had okay so let's take this girl that i met today is august 10th i met her on july 29th so it's okay it's been about two right. weeks. Mm-hmm. Almost two weeks, right? 12 days. And the way I met her, I mean, these, these my examples are going to be a little bit fucking obnoxious <laughs> because of the obnoxious lifestyle I currently live. But, uh, so, I mean, here it is. Tell it, yeah, but okay. the, so I'm sure a, we can translate. To we're it. we're yeah. on a boat in the, in the Dnipro River in Kiev. Um, it's me, two other guys, three other guys and eight girls were partying all day um we stop and four or yeah three more girls get on the boat when we stop and she's one of those girls um we basically continue partying you know we're stopping at islands on the river back on the boat getting really drunk hanging out um dancing just being retarded taking videos um, I start making out with her. I pull her down into the little bedroom at the bottom, you know, on the bottom of the boat. But there's another girl that I'm currently hooking up with. So I was, didn't want her to really see <laughs> what was going on. And my friend was hooking up with a girl in that room when I tried to go in there anyway. So I was like, fuck, okay, can't do that. So I was going to try to hook up with her on the boat. And that felt, you know, logistically that wasn't great. So then we all went to dinner, and at dinner there was like uh, four guys and like ten girls. Um, And there was 
two other girls that I hadn't met that were giving me tons of love and showing tons of interest. So I just kind of started ignoring this girl. I just wasn't <laughs> I was pretty drunk at the time. And I, uh, she kind of lost my interest, I guess there was, there's too many options at the buffet. Um, but we had exchanged, <laughs> <laughs> we had exchanged Instagrams and, and a little while later she left and she kind of gave me this look like, you know, whatever, fuck boy, I'm leaving. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> But uh, you know that doesn't it doesn't change it just makes her one makes her probably want to hook up more. Um, so I followed up. It looks like the next day. Well, let's see. Wait, hold on. I have to double check what date that was. So the this is important to the thing. So the 29th was a Sunday. Oh, so during our conversation, I sent her during our interaction. I sent her a video. Um, it was probably a video of us together. So that was, you know, that's typically what I, what I'll do when I, when I'm with a girl during our first interaction, I'll send her something in a direct message and I'll get her to respond mm -hmm. or she'll just naturally respond. You know, I'm not going to force her to do that because it'll look needy, but I sent her something that way the, the line of communication is open. I don't have to worry about trying to get her phone number. We're now connected through direct message on Instagram. Right. Okay. Right? So. Oh, she texted me. So, yeah, so this is so Sunday we met on the 29th at 6 o'clock. It was like during the height of our makeout party on one of the islands. I sent her a video. And then later that evening at 1230 in the morning, she says, have a nice evening without me. <laughs> so she, she's clearly salty. <laughs> she I, sent, I like I like her. Yeah, she's great. She sends me a laughing face. So I respond, why do you leave with a sad, sad face with a, with a tear? Um, <laughs> I know why she left. And I said, sorry, I was catching up with old friends and didn't mean to not pay attention to you. She said, I'd have to go. I need to work in morning. It's okay, smiley. No problem. And I said, okay, I want to see you soon. And she said, want to see you soon too. So... You know, we, we, there's nothing we don't know. Right. But it was kind of me like apologizing in a way for being a fuck boy. And, and at least we now have that, that interaction. So then I got sick a couple days later and she responded to my story where there's paramedics like clearly hanging out around and, and my caption is maybe I've been partying a little too much. <laughs> So she responded to the story and she said, what happened? And I said, too much party that day. It's your fault. And she said, I left early, so not mine. Get well. And then I said, thanks. And then we went, looks like a week without any interaction. And I wasn't posting anything on Instagram because I was sick. And, uh, and so I hit her up yesterday and I said, 11 days later, I'm finally healthy. How are you? She said, that's good. I'm good. Normal. How are you? How is celebration of birthday? It was Wiley's birthday celebration that she's commenting on because that was basically the only activity I had posted on Instagram. I said, Wiley was a happy boy. Haroshi Malchik. Haroshi Malchik. Just good boy in Russian. And then today she responded in the morning. He is a lucky guy. Say to him my congratulations uh, with some emojis. Where is that bar in video? Looks cool because I posted a a picture of a bar. So she's, you can tell, like she, th this girl is super into down. it, right? She's, she's down. down. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She's watching all my shit. She's commenting on my shit. She's asking me about my shit. She's, you know, this is a sign of a girl who's just a green light, right? She's right, a green light right, in person. Right. She's a green light now. Now, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go out with her one on one? No, <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> Right? Most <laughs> most people, for the mor for the mortal men or women listening, they they might want to. They might want to, and in that case, it'd be very easy. When are you free? Let's hang out. I'm free. Right. Blah blah blah. Okay, right. meet me at Par Bar this time. We go right. out. We have a drink. She comes back. We fuck. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, a super straightforward easy situation. Um, now. This, this is only going to apply to like, I don't know, maybe like two other people that ever listen to this podcast that are as fucking retarded and sick in the head as I am, right? Where they want to have this lifestyle. But if you don't want to go out with her because 
you might miss out on a threesome or an orgy if you if you go one on one. Or if you only want to hang out with her or have her come over at like 2 a.m. for sex, right? These are your options. So either I'm going to basically pump fake a one-on-one hangout, being like, oh, so what are you doing over the weekend? Oh, yeah, me and some friends are going out. Let's meet up, right? And I'll make sure she's with friends too. And then I'll attempt to – I'll set up a situation where I can meet up with her like super late night. And that way we can just go straight from like, you know, she's already – out partying i'm already out partying and then we can just go straight to fun fun time right mm-hmm. there, there's not you know flaking is okay because it's not like a one-on-one thing right you never have to worry about right. flaking if she's with people and you're with people right that's another advantage to the group hangout environment mm-hmm. um or you know if it's like a monday or tuesday night and i know that there's nothing going on then i'll be like hey let's hang out and you know I'll, i might do the one-on-one thing so that's any questions on that? No, you met her in a group context. You used the, the social media during your time with her to connect. So it just kind of became all baked into the entire connection that like that was that was the way you communicate. So that feels very natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, so, that's how you want it to feel. So I get that, yeah. Let's take another scenario. This is this one's a little bit more tricky. So okay. this is with a girl that came to a party, my birthday party week. Sounds fucking narcissistic and conceited to say that, but it wasn't just a party for me. It was a week-long party that happened to be around my birthday in Greece. It was like a big villa party, but she was one of the girls in attendance. Um, and let's see, we hooked up the very last day and then she went back to Kiev. Okay. So it's a little bit hard to follow these messages. Oh, so she messaged me. The day we left, the day she left for the trip, right after we hooked up, she said, thank you for this trip and for the wonderful last two days. Miss and love you, Elizabeth. And not like, I love you, I love you, but, you know, like, I love you, that sort of thing, right? Yeah. And I said, you're welcome, baby, love you too. Today was the best morning of the trip with a devil with horn smiley face. We should have done that earlier. And then with an ass emoji. (laughs) So... (laughs) (laughs) she didn't respond to that um and then no no response needed (laughs) no no response needed so then four days later i said i'm coming to kiev tomorrow she didn't respond the next day i said baby read your messages because she didn't read the messages right this is on whatsapp so you can tell what people read your messages and we had already hooked up right so i can be a little bit more aggressive given Mm -hmm. given these circumstances right um, so she messaged me, uh, that same day, it looks like, or two days later. And she says, I have another number, baby. And I said, okay, baby, good. They like to say baby here. I, I typically don't use <laughs> so many babies in my conversations. <laughs> right. It's pretty normal here. Yep. Um, and I found out she had, uh, she showed me a video of her having like a, a, girl on girl hookup with another girl that I hooked up with named Nika. <laughs> so, and I got a kick out of that. And we had kind of joked around about having a threesome. So my follow up was, okay, baby, good. Me, you, and Nika with three devil with horn faces. <laughs> she, <laughs> she goes, fantasy, fantasy, Robbie with a bunch of devil horns. And I said, da. My birthday present. She says, perfect fantasy. I said, I want to see you. I'm here in Kiev. She says, now you in Kiev. Yes, I arrived last night. Welcome to your second home. And then I said, first home. (laughs) And then that was it. And then uh, two days later, I said, hi, baby. How are you? She says, hi, dear. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? And I said, I'm good. Hoping to see you. Come with me tonight to this party. And I sent her the information on a big event that me and a friend were holding um 
at a bar here. It was like a casting and also an event. She said, thank you, but I will not be. Let's see you at the weekend, question mark. And I said, I'm leaving for Corsica on Saturday. Would you like to come? She said, with you to the end of the world, kissy face dear, but I can only fly 24 of June. I said, perfect, you can come with Nika. She said, who of the girls will be? And I said, 22 girls, 7 guys. Robbie, I do not know if I'm going. I will know tomorrow. Can you buy a ticket tomorrow, not today? I said, we already bought. Uh, and I said, what's the problem? And, she said, for, and I said, for me? Um, and I said, yeah. But something happened. She was supposed to come, um, but then she had to go to Korea. So she didn't come to that party, basically. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, let me try to speed this up. This is getting a little too long-winded. So then there was some friction um, around seeing her again. Um, for you or for her or both? For me, like I couldn't, like I couldn't see her. Um, like on the so the fifth of July. This is now. It had now been almost a month since I saw her and hooked up with her in Greece. Right, that was June tenth. Now it's July fifth. Hi, babe. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. And you? I'm good. I want to see my wife. We had this funny joke about green cards, and she's going to be my green card wife. And she said, your wife now in Russia. I'm with my parents. And I said, what the fuck, wife? She said, ha ha. I said, wife, pizdiet, which is wife is shit. No green card. (laughs) 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 And then um, I said, when will you be back? She said, July 8th. Okay. And I said, okay, write me. It's not fair that you leave, leave and make me take care of the children and dog, especially after I bought you all the jewelry. Bad wife. You don't even do dishes anymore. What the fuck? So that's just a stupid little role play, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. A, a great kind of way to do it. And keep in mind, this whole time, I didn't have her fucking Instagram. <laughs> right. So you're. This is, this is all just WhatsApp. This is all WhatsApp. And then she says, on this and I leave from you that there are no children, no dog, no jewelry. <laughs> so then I say, wife, are you back? No. So then... I say, me and Vitaly are putting together a happy birthday for Masha. Come to this spa group event, blah, blah, blah. Cool party. I would like to be there, but I will not. So, <laughs> right, so that's more invitations, more more declines. So I'm I'm dangerously in chase mode here, right? Now, the one good thing is she is very responsive. Uh, we have already hooked up. She knows I'm just a complete disaster of a of a human and probably fucking 19 other girls. So it's not like I look like a needy loser, right? But that could also be hurting me, having the reputation of being such a fuckboy. Um, so then another uh, another five days go by, and I said, so are we getting a divorce? She says, how are you? Good and you. Normal. What are you doing? I said, nothing. I'm bored. Let's hang out. Where? You will not alone? How many people? I have a few friends that want to come. She says, I don't like a gata. Because <laughs> she always sees me hanging out with a gata, right? I said, okay, a gata won't come. I can bring girls, guys, just girls, whatever, just myself. Where do you want to go? She said, are you want to party, club, something like this? And I said, no, nah, I just want to see my wife. But club, whatever, is cool. So, I, you know, I really wanted to see her. I, wanted, I didn't give a fuck if it was a group situation or a one-on-one, right? So her, her, her strategy was working. So we ended up meeting up that night, and it was like no time had passed. It was great. Um, hung out in a group situation, thinned the the herd as the night went by, went to a few different places, went back to her house, and hooked up. Then, finally, I got her fucking Instagram. <laughs> and then from there on out, there was no friction. So had I had her Instagram earlier, um, there probably would have been way less friction and more opportunities where we could have just met up like because i found out later that she was out a lot of the time and we were we had even been at like the same bar one time and like we didn't we didn't see each other because i i saw a picture on her instagram of the, a bar and i was at the bar the same fucking night so had we had each other's instagram we would have met and it was just pure stupidity why i didn't get it so there's a you know a perfect scenario where having the instagram would have made things a lot more smooth right okay um you know and then her and i have been uh casually seeing each other ever since it's been great cool um 
Now, let's take another scenario that's not me, just because mine are all too fucking strange. All right, so you're at a bar. You meet a girl, right? You're hanging out. You're with friends. She's with friends. During that conversation, you, you know, there, there's so many ways to bring up Instagram because any, like, you're telling a story and it relates to a picture. You pull up your Instagram to show her this, the the picture oh she's been to this place oh look i was here too you showed showed the picture there's so many opportunities and reasons why you could get out your phone and instagram so always be thinking about that that way there's no awkward exchange of number right or at the end you can get her number as well right but you always have her instagram which is more important um so you pull out your instagram you know you you say oh look let me see yours too you follow her she follows you back right you send her a stupid meme or you send her a video or you you know you send her something on the spot so you have the dialogue open right um and then as the next few days go by you see if she likes any of your stuff you might like something of hers just to kind of get the that virtual dialogue going and then if there's a lot of activity on instagram you send her a message on instagram if there's not then you just send her a text right I would start with the Instagram message because you already have a dialogue there, right? And use that. Basically, just use all of the, the, the strategies from the texting guide on Instagram through DM. It's no different. And if you find that she's not very responsive or she's not reading it, then you could th- send her a text and be like, hey, my shit might have got – I noticed you didn't read my message. might have got lost in a huge shuffle of Instagram DMs. So I figured I'd text you instead. Okay. And you just switch to texting. Okay. Very straightforward. Okay. Well, it's just an extra tool. You know, you can use it as a primary means of communication, depending on her, or you can just use it as an extra tool to gather information and to stay top of mind. That's yeah, really all it I, is. No, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, to do this, I think to do this successfully, you need to... I mean, you kind of need to make a commitment to your Instagram account. Or... And I recommend that, that you do that because it's it's such a widely used um, you know, social media. If you don't have an Instagram these days, you know, it's, it's not – like if you don't have a Facebook, that's fucking weird. Right? <laughs> yeah. And pretty yes. soon people will have the same sentiment towards Instagram. What are your recommendations for – kinds of things to post, how often to post, um, things not to post. Well, let's look at yours. Do you mind if we, can we use yours for the call? Sure. Yeah. Go okay. for it. J A S O N B R O D Y I R L. Can we, are we going to, can we bleep that out for the podcast? <laughs> no, that's the whole point is they can look at yours. Okay. They can look <laughs> at mine. Yeah, Fuck whatever. It. Who cares? Right. The- um, so going through your Instagram, Jason Brody, writer, musician, adventure traveler, thoughtful human blog coming soon at New York, nomad.com band music post at, at C music, New York, nomad.com. Um, the one thing I would recommend about changing in the little bio there, uh, thoughtful human, I would take that out just because it's, um, you're, you're telling versus showing. Okay. You'd, you'd want to show that through your pictures, not spell it out, because people will be like, ah, if he's saying he's thoughtful, maybe he's a dick. It's a red maybe, flag, right? Maybe he is. <laughs> um, so going through your pictures here, some videos, some landscapes, a uh, sign. I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. That's cool. More landscapes. Keep going. So it looks like there's a mixture of landscapes, um, some videos that have a lot of. Eh, there's like a dog video or something. Um, oh no no, this is people. Some sort of. Uh, oh, you're arriving. This is cool. There was a dog in the video, but they're screaming that you've arrived. Right. That's, that's funny. Um, there's some, you know, there are good high quality photos. There's lots of color, which makes it stand out. There's not too many got, photos of you, which is cool. Um, I like landscape stuff a lot. And yeah. I got really into using. There's a couple of things that I really like to use for editing photos now. 
Yeah, and you have a good, oh, Snapseed is what I'd recommend just for the idiot. That's all I know how to do, and it's very simple. You just download Snapseed. It's the app, and you can make all your pictures look really good with, like, one click. Um, if you want to get into more high-tech editing, we can post some links at the end of the podcast for that. But Snapseed is a go-to. I'm a fan of this app called Enlight. How do you spell it? E-N-L-I-G-H-T. Enlight. Okay. So you have a good mix of, you know, you doing cool shit. There's a cool um, picture of you doing um, snatches, you know. Oh, yeah. Good athletic yeah. one. There's a funny one of you. Looks like getting a haircut. You look like Jesus. Um, yeah. Some landscapes. Yeah. You know, you, you have a good mix of here I am, here's some other cool shit that other people would be interested in, right? So this is great because you're going to get a lot of, you know, it gives girls a lot of opportunities to like the picture. You don't have any cringeworthy things in here at all. There's no like pictures of you with one girl where it might look like a girlfriend or, you know, whatever. If if it's a long time ago and it's just you with an ex, that's fine. Like if you go through my Instagram, there's pictures with me with one girl. Um, and usually that's the girl I've been hooking up with or, or something, but they're, they're far back in the, in the past. So it's not like, you know, if you've got a bunch of pictures of you and a girl or you and multiple girls and you can kind of give off the wrong impression. So always having at least three people in a picture. Like if you look at my Instagram, most of my pictures are with me and multiple girls. If there's girls in the picture. Right. And then if I wanted to go hardcore douchey, which I have a couple times, this is me and like 10 girls. <laughs> Those are more for other other purposes, not necessarily for having a a good Instagram. I, I use my Instagram for some other purposes it's, as far as like, you know, these trips that I'm going on and just a way to kind of uh, document the trips. And, you know, it's uh, it's not necessarily the the best use, you could say. So you might not want to use my Instagram as an example. Um, but this one's great. I think your Instagram is awesome. Um, you know, and you've got, you know, like I said, almost 3000 followers and all you'd have to do is just keep consistently posting and you're good to go. Right. Um, stories, you know, posting stories is a better way to stay top of mind because people tend to use Instagram. Um, at least what I've witnessed and what I do myself is the first thing that you do is you start watching the stories and they put people's stories that you watch the most at the beginning of your story feed. And I think people and stories are more interesting than pictures, obviously, because they're videos, right? Or they're videos and pictures is more exciting. So consistently posting stories is a better way to stay top of mind. But if you're doing boring shit, then it's not a ton you can post regarding that. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's good to know, though. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've never made an Instagram story, but it's just because... They're um, fun. And if you're good at making stories, you can make anything boring into a cool story. <laughs> Because you can use all the features and all the, you could, you know, there, there's those different Snapchat features that Instagram stole where you can like, you know, take a selfie and it'll have dog ears on you or you'll stick out your tongue. It's a video selfie and this is funny, stupid shit, right? Right, right. And people like to watch this stuff. It's okay. Addicting. Okay. So say, say I'm like. Joe Schmo, who lives in Tallahassee and works at a bank. Okay. How, do, how does that guy make social media gold out of his or her life? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, ser- but seriously, like everyone, you know, if we're, if we're, I if mean, we're let's talking, face it. There's uh, going to be some people where we just can't help them. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, like they, they have nothing going on. They, you know, they're in a, a very usual routine. They don't particularly mm-hmm. like making funny, you know, dog selfie videos. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. gonna post those, and they're mm-hmm. just kind of dry toast. What right. can you do, right? 
So maybe it, reproduction it, is isn't the course of your life. You know, maybe it's best <laughs> survival the fittest that you don't reproduce. That's cold. <laughs> <laughs> but like, for a person like that, would you say like maybe nothing is better than something that sucks? Um. So the example of a really shitty Instagram is like someone who doesn't even have enough pictures to fill the main screen. Right, right. Right? right, right. <laughs> so there's no scrolling. It's just like seven pictures and, right. you know, they're poorly lit, shitty quality photos. You're better right. off not having anything, right? Right. Like if you're going to do it, at least give it the minimum effort where it looks like you're going to need, you know, it, one, two, three going to need at least 15 pictures, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally shoot for, for you know, closer to 30. So there's some scrolling action happening. And you're, and you're saying you're putting up, you're putting up two to three. You're, you're posting every two to three days, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't post more than once a day because then, you know, it's just, you just bomb people's feed and they'll unfollow yeah. you. Right. No, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. The uh, worst is when people post like five at a time of the same thing. That's like, I hate that. Yeah. It's very stupid. Um, it's a great way to, to lose followers and to annoy people. Um, yeah. You know, so, but I post a story every day. I'm constantly posting stories. But that doesn't, you know, that only goes to the feed if you choose to watch it. Right. And people love my stories because it's just constant, ridiculous, crazy shit. Like I, I, I get comments almost, you know, on a daily basis. I love your stories. Keep posting, keep being the weirdo you are. <laughs> your stories inspire me. So <laughs> I get more, more love on my stories than I basically have gotten in anything else I've ever done and put on the internet. <laughs> so yep. People like to see, you know, people doing That's awesome. stupid, funny shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so, you know, I like using Instagram. It's fun. You get the validation points, you know, so you get that little dopamine burst when someone sends you a message or likes your shit. You obviously mm -hmm. don't want to <laughs> become addicted to that because that can be a very empty, unfulfilling, miserable existence if you get too caught up in validation and, and uh, you know, that virtual world. So you don't want to spend all your time on Instagram. And I always like to think that people are watching my stories more than I'm watching theirs. And I try to right. limit my Instagram use because it can be addicting and it, and it will really make you unhappy if you use it too much. Because all you're being bombarded with is other people's best stuff while you're sitting there with nothing to do, obviously going through Instagram. So it makes you feel like shit. Mm hmm. Yeah, I definitely had when I was using it heavily, I... I definitely went through a little bit of that and I, I, it's, it's very distracting and yeah. kind of, you know, gets kind of depressing after a while too. Oh yeah. It makes but, you feel like absolute shit because it's, you're, you're seeing people doing the coolest shit that they've done that day and you're getting just bombarded with other cool shit. You're not doing cool shit at that moment. So you feel like shit and then it's just addicting. So you just, you're like, fuck, I just wasted an hour looking through Instagram and everyone's having fun and I'm not and I suck and I'm a loser. I think that's I think that's why they made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like FOMO FOMO put into into digital. Yeah, it's like cyber FOMO. Yeah, I don't know. It's here's a dose of FOMO for you. Yeah. Here's the few thousand. Mhm. Mm yeah. The week following Coachella or Burning Man, it's like, oh god, here comes the rush of fucking. <laughs> more right. FOMO pictures right so it can be a very shallow empty you know soul sucking activity so don't use it for that use it as a picture album use it to stay top of mind and use it as a tool for other people to you know keep in touch with you right are there I'm trying to think. I'm looking at my questions and seeing if there's anything we haven't really gotten into. You you cover a lot of it in the intro, actually, up top, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just looking to see what else there might be here.
Um, well, I guess, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit, or I wanted you to talk a little bit about um, just kind of the, you know, like, social media is like a millennial native form of communication, right? Like, I'm, I'm a little bit older. I, I use the stuff, but I feel like some of that comes from the fact that, like, I have worked in or been around people who are part of the, part of some world or profession that kind of re requires that. But, like, are there certain kinds of girls that – or guys that – this is really targeted for do you are you know is there i don't know i guess i'm kind of rambling but are there is there like a demographic element to this and like do you feel like it's really specific to you know kind of a certain type of girl or uh, or guy or fr from a certain place like are there cultural uh, elements to, to thinking about this? Uh, mm, is, not really. I mean, okay. hot girls, <laughs> right? If she's hot, she's probably on Instagram. Right. And it's just so easy for girls, right? They just post pictures of themselves and they get tons of followers and they get tons of validation and it's like the ultimate validation game. Right. So if it was my daughter, I'd tell her, <laughs> be very careful about this, right? Because you'll right. also become very depressed and living in a FOMO universe, but a lot of people don't realize that. And it's so much easier for a girl to get a ton of followers, depending on how hot she is. Right? If she's hot, fuck, she'll have fifty thousand followers pretty quickly. Just post, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, you can't post naked shit on Instagram, but bathing suit shots, whatever. It's you know, depending on how aggressive you are. But, you know, girls will post 12 fucking pictures in a row, and, and there's just so many thirsty loser guys following all these chicks, and other girls, too, um, that their accounts will build up relatively fast. Right. You know, everyone's on it. I don't know any cultures that aren't really using it, aside from, you know, Asian cultures that I don't really have any interest in or aren't very social. Like, I don't know how, how many you know, people are using Instagram in China or if it's even allowed, but... Yeah, you know, I don't know either. Yeah. It's probably banned. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, basically everywhere else in the world, people use it. Um, very active in Europe, other more party spots in Asia, Thailand, Bali, you know, mm -hmm. um, Vietnam, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously Australia, South America, I travel down there, Brazil, girls all have it. They all use it. So, yeah, it's, you know, uh, to answer your question yeah everyone's on it and if if you're wanting to interact with hot girls then I would suggest you have some sort of presence too okay makes sense do you feel like um, do you care about Snapchat I hate Snapchat do you care about Snapchat I used to use Snapchat before Instagram had stories now, okay, I only use you, Instagram, right? Because you it basically stole that whole yeah. thing, and yeah, okay. Is there any other thing that matters that's that's um, worth? I'll post. So my Instagram is a lot more obnoxious than my Facebook, because mm -hmm. you know I've got family members following my Facebook, and it's, it's more of like a a public thing, and I don't like to. I only like to communicate on Facebook. You know, I don't like to like pictures on Facebook or do shit like that. I, I'm not mm -hmm. active at all. Facebook is just such a huge fucking time suck, right? Yeah. Even worse yeah. than Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. I'll spend a little bit of time each day just, like, crying and cruising around Instagram because it's, it's, you know, it's just pictures and videos. But Facebook, you know, you're going to get sucked into political shit and blah, 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 marketing, right? Advertising. They're advertising more on Instagram now these days, too. But mm -hmm. it's just a, more of a danger, <laughs> <laughs> to me so i very rarely post on facebook unless it's um you know something related to inner confidence or leverage or you know something business related that i use it for right but i will automatically have some of my pictures upload to facebook if they're you know not too x-rated right 
So it's just a way to keep my Facebook feed live, or my Facebook feed up to date as well. Right. But other sites, no, not really. Um, you know, and if you're on dating sites, I recommend putting your Instagram handle in your profile, just so. You know, if 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 your Instagram isn't cringeworthy. All right, I'm I'm gonna connect it. Fuck it. Yeah, hundred percent. You should. Um, cool. Do you? Is there anything that you feel like we missed or that we didn't cover? I'm I'm looking through all the stuff that I that I wrote out before we talked, and I feel like we kind of kind of hit all the notes. Do you uh, Do you agree? Is there anything that, that you want to get into? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we got it all. I think, I think um, at some point it would be cool to see. We kind of talked about this before, but um, a guy, some kind of a guide that, that that comes out of this, and maybe that has more specifics like you have in the in the texting guide. That might be a cool supplement thing to to offer people because I think a lot of people would really benefit from that. Yeah, well, let's let's ask them. So, who's ever listening to this? If you want to, you know, comment, um, if you have any interest in a, a more formal presentation or guide or step by step where we can go into more detail around some of this stuff, um, you know, just leave a comment below. And depending on the level of interest, maybe we'll we'll make it. Cool. All right. Well, Jason, thanks so much for helping me steer the call and uh, being such a great guest on the show. I yeah, that was fun. I really I appreciate uh, talking to you about all this, and that, yeah, that was great. All right, well, thanks for everyone for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode.